The Sloppy Joe, a sandwich made of ground beef, onions, maybe uh, some bell peppers thrown in there, some spices, and Worcestershire sauce, all mixed together in a tomato sauce atop a hamburger bun. Mmm. <laughs> Man, I could go for one. Yeah. <laughs> Some say the Sloppy Joe was born in a cafe in Sioux City, Iowa, way back in the 1930s. Others say Key West, Florida. And then, well, there are those who say the sandwich's origin was dreamt up in Havana, Cuba, at a bar called Sloppy Joe's. The one thing we do know is that the origin of this comfort food will likely be argued about for many years to come. But that's not what we're talking about here today. <laughs> Sandwiches? <laughs> what I want to pull on your coat about is a drink called Sloppy Joe's Special Cocktail. It's an odd little tropical concoction that dates back to around 1933 and was the official free, <laughs> did I say free? Free? Who gives away free drinks? <laughs> it was the official free welcome drink at Sloppy Joe's for celebrities and tourists alike. The bar was owned and operated by a Spaniard named Jose Abiali Otero and his partner, Valentin Garcia. Otero's nickname was Sloppy Joe, given to him by his regulars, probably because the place itself was a mess. It was shabby and had problems with running water and sewage pipes. Maybe that was the secret sauce in their Sloppy Joes. <laughs> Just a thought. <laughs> Besides the famous sandwich, they offered over 80 cocktails in addition to the bar's own brand of 12-year-old rum. Sloppy Joe's bar actually stretched 60 feet or over 18 meters in length and was immortalized in the 1959 movie Our Man in Havana, starring Alec Guinness and based on the novel by British author Graham Greene, who, you know, just happened to be one of Sloppy Joe's former patrons. Among other illustrious Sloppy Joe visitors were movie stars John Wayne, Spencer Tracy, Ava Gardner, and Clark Gable. Comedian Mario Morano, musicians Ray Tico, Bola de Neve, Jose Antonio Mendez, and many other personalities of the time, including Frank Sinatra, Rock Hudson, Babe Ruth, and of course, Ernest Hemingway. According to one theory, the Sloppy Joe sandwich came to America thanks to Ernest Hemingway, when he convinced Joe Russell, a good drinking buddy of his, to name his bar Sloppy Joe's after the famous bar in Havana. In the period after the Cuban Revolution of 1959, the bar's business really dropped off, as some 90% of Sloppy Joe's clientele were American. A fire in 1965 closed the establishment for good. But 48 years later, it reopened in 2013. Back to the Sloppy Joe special cocktail. As I said, this is an odd little tropical. There's no rum in it, but I think it follows a tiki template quite nicely. <laughs> Let's make one. We're gonna start with some pineapple, fresh pineapple. Now, you could use, you could use canned pineapple. That's easy enough. Um, I like fresh, you know, that's just me though, you know? Anyway, we're gonna cut this with a knife I don't even have. What the hell? <sighs> Shit. I thought I brought it down. Well, while you're waiting, here's some fun facts about pineapple. Got my knife. <laughs> yeah, we do. And okay, we're gonna cut this thing. I think I'll cut the top off first with this really dull knife. God, I gotta get I gotta get, I gotta get this sharpened. All right, set that off to the side. Now, 
What we're gonna do is just cut a little bit of this here off here. Yeah, that's good. Just like that. Try and do this as fast as possible. Beauty. Cut these guys into little bite-sized pieces. Okay, anyway, what we're gonna do is we want like two ounces. And we'll just get to uh, pressing. Yeah, with a few of these little pieces in our press. If you've never had fresh pressed pineapple juice, you don't know what you're missing. I mean, it is so delicious. Completely different than the canned stuff. That's all I'm gonna say. Now I'm thinking if you're working like busy bar, you're not gonna do this. <laughs> <laughs> You're gonna have it all prepped, of course you are. And you probably wouldn't use fresh pineapple anyway, unless you were living in the tropics, maybe. There we go. Two ounces, yeah, baby. Let's uh, swap this for this, gently. Okay, we're gonna start with uh, Hennessy, uh, cognac. Uh, you know, this is a, a VS, yes, and uh, I wouldn't go anything beyond a VS, I don't think. I guess it, you could use brandy, you know, if you haven't got cognac, but the recipe called for cognac initially. We're going to use one ounce. Our next ingredient is uh, some port. I've got the Sandy Man here. It's a ruby port. You could use um, a tawny port, but the, the ruby port tends to be more fruit forward, right? Tawny port is, is much more uh, complex in its flavors, probably because of the aging in the casks. We're going with one ounce. Yeah, nice ruby color there. Next thing we're gonna do is add our pineapple juice, our fresh pineapple juice, two ounces. Mm-hmm. Interesting. Yeah. Okay, we're gonna follow that up with a little uh, curacao, some dry curacao here. And we only want an eighth of a teaspoon. There it is. Yeah. <laughs> and we'll follow that up with some grenadine. It's our homemade grenadine, of course it is. And again, one eighth of a teaspoon. Wow, oh, that's thick. There it is. Doesn't seem like a lot, but it certainly will add to this cocktail. Let's add some ice. We're gonna shake it. <laughs> Sloppy. <laughs> Actually, it should be leaking all over the sides, shouldn't it? <laughs> shake it. Shake it up good. Oh, yeah, that feels good, actually. That feels right. And all you're gonna do is a sloppy pour. <laughs> a dirty dump right into your glass and we're just gonna top her up with a little bit more ice. Fill up the glass. It looks quite nice, doesn't it? Mm -hmm. We're gonna garnish uh, with some pineapple. Mm -hmm. We should almost have a umbrella. What do you think? What? Oh, Jesus! <laughs> Should've wished for cash. All right. We're just gonna slide that puppy right in there. Oh, Bubba. Bubba? <laughs> I don't know how I like this. <laughs> I don't like it. On the side? <laughs> that sucks. All right, we're in. <laughs> and you know, maybe we'll add a few little pineapple leaves here too. Oh yeah, look at that. Look at how wonderful that looks. Very inviting. Let's give it a go. <laughs> I get the port right off the bat. It's not bad, actually. 
The uh, cognac is coming through really nicely. I think the pineapple just kind of blends everything together. Almost looks like you kind of made a face there, Bruce, when you uh, took your first sip. Well, wasn't I didn't know what to expect. That's why. It's actually quite well balanced. The pineapple juice, curacao, and grenadine, well, they seem to work together as a familiar flavor family. It's the port and cognac that seem to be out of place here, but I think they lend a unique exoticness to the drink that would be missing if this was simply another rum concoction. I think I could use more, um, more curacao, personally. Anyway, this is actually quite lovely. Not too bad. And you know, we gotta thank Beach Bum Berry here again. He's the guy who dug it up. You know, you gotta ask yourself, what would this taste like with a Sloppy Joe sandwich? I bet you it would be an awesome combination. And that's probably why they gave it out as a free drink. Huh, who knows? Yeah, that works for me. Introducing the Sloppy Joe, a brand new dance. From Libby's, the people who make Sloppy Joes. Just heat and eat. And swing to the beat. Nothing like it anywhere. Get beef or pork. What do kids think of it? Man, it's the sloppiest. Get your sloppy on. That's what I'm talking about. I don't know what that means. <laughs> get sloppy. I guess you get sloppy after a couple of these. But hell, what do you want for a free drink? That's what they gave you when you go there. Anyway, you get sloppy. You get <laughs> I know. In the meantime, you hit that sloppy. <laughs> Hit that sloppy subscribe button and those sloppy other videos and slop out, man. 